we have we are live. I don't want to talk about it. You understand? Can you talk about it? Uh, is it about time to it? <laughs> yes. I don't need this option. Oh, that one is good. Yeah, this like looks optimal. That's really good. It looks optimal. This is small. No. Oh. This is That was a very sad moment in my life. I was like, hey, all this movie, but... <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I think I knew what I was doing. I'm so scared. I'm so far. 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 I'm so no, I don't know where Steve went. Yeah. Thank you. 
seats in the front, especially you, uh, John, because uh, if he moves around there, you may not even be able to see the speaker. <coughs> there are seats on the other side, also on the back, if you want to sit in the back. Okay, uh, welcome back to another session. Today's session is on time management, and our speaker today is Stephen Nagel. Uh, as uh, you might have read, he's a past district governor with Kiwanis. Uh, Stephen has lived in Edison since 1969, attending elementary, junior high, and high school in Edison. He continued his education at Montclair State University, and he served as a baseball coach for eight years in the town. And he has served on Edison's Recreation Wrestling Board. When he was in Edison High School, he was a key club president. Uh, key club is a parallel club to Leo. In college, he was elected governor of New Jersey District of Circle K International when he was a sophomore. After graduation, he joined Kiwanis and was elected governor of the New Jersey District of Kiwanis International at the age of 39, the youngest in the world that year. He was Recognized as a distinguished governor by the Kiwanis International Board of Trustees. He is a, a legend of honor member, was awarded the Kiwanis International Hickson Fellowship. He has also received recognition in New Jersey, being recognized as a Carrington Swan Fellow. Professionally, he is the executive director of Special Gifts, an organization that works with adults living with autism. He's married for 24 years to Deborah, and they have a 20-year-old son, Adam, and a six-year-old, uh, Dashman Itawan. So once again, I know for, uh, Saturday afternoon, now the weather is getting bet better. Everyone wants to do other things. So thank you, Stephen, for being here today, and we welcome you. 
know, whenever, whenever I hear that, I always say, who the heck is that? <laughs> yeah, thank you all for being here. Let me take a moment and extend my thanks to uh, uh, Governor Mass for inviting me to come and speak to you. I think I have three hours to talk to you this afternoon. <laughs> uh, I'll try to call that down to a little under an hour. What I was asked to come and talk to you about today is time management. And I believe with everything that we do, you have to have a goal. So what is our goal? What is your goal? Your goal is to be in control of your time, right? I want to share with you an interesting quote. Don't say you never have enough time. You have exactly the same number of hours per day that were given to Helen Keller, Luis Pasteur, Michelangelo, Mother Teresa, Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Jefferson, and Albert Einstein. It's all in how you use it. So we're going to talk for a couple minutes about ways and tools that you can use to help you manage your time. You have 24 hours in a day. You spend some of that sleeping. You spend some of that doing recreational activities. You spend some of that doing schoolwork. I'm going to focus on your school and try to help you be the best students and the best LEO members you can be. So my first tip is put together a to-do list. Every day, put the most important tasks at the top, even if the one you hate doing, you call it dreading. They're the ones that really tend to get pushed to the side by a person every day. Put the ones that you know you hate to do up at the top. You hate taking out the garbage. I don't know anybody who likes taking, does anybody here like taking the garbage out? <laughs> Almost everybody hates taking out the garbage, but it's something you have to do, right? Right? And this is going to be very boring if we go one way. So if it's something you hate to do, put it at the top of your list. Get it done. You won't have to look at it again. Okay? Uh, include things that you uh, want to do on that list, too. So you have things that you're looking forward to doing. If you like play, hanging out with your friends, put that on the list along with taking the garbage out. Try motivating yourself with a reward if you get everything done on your list. So let me ask you a question. Let, let me give you a little bit of advice. Don't let this be you.
Anybody recognize themselves in that video at all? Yeah, yeah, some of you do, I'm sure you do. Let's make sure that doesn't happen to you, where all of a sudden you have a project due that day, and you go, oh my gosh, what happened? I knew a week ago, and I never got to it. So I want to give you some practical tips and advice on how to manage your time so you can get everything done you want to do in a day. One point is you don't have to take notes for this. This PowerPoint's available. They can print it out for you, email it to you, whatever you like. You can have a copy of it. Uh, I'm certainly not um, going to withhold any of it from you. I would like you to know, however, that the information that you're going to get, a lot of it came from the college boards. And when you get into high school, you can be taking something called the SATs and the ACTs, if you're familiar with them. The college board is the organization that runs the SAT program. So I wanted to give you some information based on the practical experiences you're going to have uh, in your near future or not too distant future. So the first thing I want you to do is I make cool transitions too, so you don't get bored looking at it, uh, um, is to keep your work with you. That way, if you find yourself with some extra time, if you're waiting for the school bus, if you're in an extracurricular activity and you're there early, um, you can get your priority work done first. That way, you, you have good use of your time instead of sitting there just playing around on your phone. Here's a good one. How many of you are afraid to say no to your friends when they ask you to do something? How many of you are afraid to say no when they ask you to go somewhere or do something? A lot of people are. It's okay to say no to your friends if they ask you to go to a movie one night, but you have a test the next morning. Find a time that works for both of you to go and go see the movie then. Make sure that you manage your time. Don't let other people manage your time for you. Find your most productive time. How many people are morning people? You're a morning person. Do your best work in the morning. I tell you what, I am not. <laughs> How many of you are more night people? Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'd like to see them in the majority of something. You'll be more efficient when you're doing your homework at that time. But here's an interesting thought for you. And this is your, your medical lesson of the day. Use daylight hours to study whenever you can. For most people, for every hour they study during daylight hours, it'll take one and a half hours for them to do the same task at night. So if you can, push yourself to do your most important studying in the morning or early afternoon and not at night because you'll actually accomplish one and a half more times work during the day than you would at night. Okay? Create a dedicated study time. Set up a time devoted only to studying your homework. Shut off, and this is the thing that, that everybody dreads, shut off your phones. Okay, no texting, no Facebook, no Instagram, no Snapchat, Snapchat while you're studying, okay? Only respond to your friends' calls and texts when you're done. Don't check your emails or surf the web except when you need to do research for your homework. And only make that what you're on the net for at that time. Become task oriented. For a lot of people, this is different than the way you've been done things in the past. Schedule your most difficult times for when you are the most alert. Most of you said that tonight. Okay? Algebra is hard enough to do when you're fresh and awake, but when you're tired, it's darn near impossible. For some of us, it's darn near impossible all the time, whether it's day or night. But think about what your best time is to do your homework and make that your time. Dedicate that your time to that time. Next thing you need to do is budget your time. Figure out how much time you usually spend on activities and create for yourself a weekly schedule. And then follow it. Determine how much free time you have before you add any commitments, and don't forget to schedule time for, to relax. So, if you think about the schedule that you would make every week, on Saturday, you would have Leo on today, right? Yes? Yes or yes? Yes. You would have Leo's on today. What would you have on Monday? What would you have on Tuesday? If you start to grid out your time, you'll see where you have free time, where your study time comes in, and when two have the potential of overlapping, 
And then you need to make decisions that are in the best interest of who? You. That's correct. Okay? Don't get sidetracked. If you find yourself wasting time on unimportant things, stop. Remember we talked about setting priorities earlier? If you're working on something that is not one of your top priorities and you have top priorities are in the way, stop and get back and refocus. Okay? Uh, maybe you're procrastinating because you're not sure how to move forward on a school project. If there's a problem, check with your teacher to clear things up so you can get yourself moving again. That again goes to leaving yourself enough time, like we saw in the video, to make sure it's not the day before and you're scrambling and you don't have everything you need to successfully write that paper or that report that's due to the teacher the next day. Here's the most important thing, and this is something I definitely don't do enough of. Get enough sleep. Okay, hopefully you won't be getting some of that while I'm talking. Um, but your brain needs rest to perform. As teenagers, this is one of the times like this is one of the times you left that your brain grows the most and the fastest. And if you're not getting enough rest, your brain isn't able to operate at its peak. Bless you. Um, if it's time to sleep, list the things you still need to do on your priority list and move them to the next day's list and go to bed. Okay? That is, bless you twice. Thank you. That is all I want to really talk to you about regarding um, time management. I did have a video to show you. I'm a big believer. You can, we, and I'm going to help you set that up in one second. Um, I'm a big believer in all of your potential. I have to tell you that. I all hardly believe that the, the, all of the future leaders of business, commerce, and government are in this room. Okay? And whenever I talk to students, I always like to show this one video you're about to see. Yes, please. See, we didn't practice this one time. Okay. And if you can click on that button in the lower right hand corner, right here. Yep, that one. A little higher. There you go. There you go.
and Yankee. I, all, I wholeheartedly believe that everybody in this room is that person that can make that one degree of difference. Each one of you here has the potential to do great things for yourself, your community, and the world as a whole. If you need any example of that, look at your line governor, who's here in Edison, but right now his heart is in Nepal with the people that were ravaged by the earthquake there and are doing everything, and he's doing everything he can to help them. You're bigger than yourself. Your being in this room proves that you're bigger than yourself. So with that said, what questions do you have about time management, about the subjects we just discussed? Anything? Any other questions you'd like to ask since I'm not your parents and you don't get yelled at if you ask questions? Anything that you would like to know that I didn't cover? Anybody? Anything? Yes. Uh, so what happens if you uh, you had a priority item for today and you couldn't get to that because something else came up? Um, what do you do with that? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a question that requires a two-part answer. The first part is if you properly prioritized, and there, there's an old saying that prior proper planning prevents poor performance. You don't have to remember that. You'll hear it again. Um, <laughs> if you plan properly, you would have met all the priorities of your date. But if you didn't, what you need to do, as we talked about earlier, is take the priority or priorities you didn't get to today and move them into tomorrow's list. And then you have to readjust tomorrow's list to make sure that the priority you didn't get to today is the top priority for the next day. Other questions? None of you? I did not do that well that nobody has a question. I've never been done that well before. Yes, sir. I'm sorry? How do you beat laziness? How do you beat laziness? Well, you remember we talked about in the beginning, and if um, I can ask you to go back to, and hang on a sec, because I'm going to give you a visual reference too, but I need to find out where it is. The question was, how do you beat laziness? Okay, and if you can go to slide number one of them. Um, first thing, go to slot the uh, uh, become task oriented, please. Slide okay. twelve. Actually, yeah. Actually, go to four first. There's your first way to prevent being lazy. Make a to do list and put everything that you need to do that day on the list. So that's the first thing to help you prevent to be lazy. The second thing is now go to 12, which was task oriented. <laughs> Become task oriented. The way you get yourself out of being lazy is you make a list that you make yourself accountable to. So if you have five things to do, and one of them is that dreaded taking out the garbage, then you know that it is not done until you check it off your list. And that becomes one of the tasks you have to complete that day. So by maintaining that list, and I will tell you, it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of effort, especially when you first start doing this. And this, this is universal for whether you're 15 or 55. It takes a lot of work to develop that list first and then make yourself accountable to it. But if you do that and you, you uh, make sure you use the time management skill we talked about earlier, you, you, you'll have time to be lazy because you'll actually write in their time for laziness or relaxation or hangout time. You budget for that. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. How do you get rid of distractions? How do you get rid of distractions? I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I used to work for an organization that the boss put on his door one day, he shut his door, he put a note on. He said, unless there's a fire, do not disturb me. So what he did is the same thing you can do, which is shut your door. <coughs> shut your door if you live in, in a house where you can't avoid distractions, get out of the house. Go to the library. You, do, you all know where your local library is? Gosh, please say yes. Um, go, to the, go to your library. Something a lot of people don't know is you can go to the Middlesex County College Library too. Okay, so if you're afraid, you know, if you have a habit of bumping into your friends at the library and that becomes another distraction, 
because now you're going somewhere to avoid distractions. You get distracted at your place where you're trying to avoid it. Go to a, a place where nobody else goes. The Middlesex County College Library is a great place to go. It's huge. You can find a desk. They have computers there, and you can do all your stuff there. The way to avoid distractions is, number one, make the people around you aware of the fact that you're doing a, a task that requires your total complete concentration. And then you need to set yourself up in an environment to make you successful at avoiding those, avoiding those distractions. Turn off your cell phone. As hard as that is, turn off your cell phone. Because if it's on, you will have a propensity, which means you will have just the, an idea to have, let me just take a look, and that will distract you. You'll get texts, because everybody gets texts and stuff while they're, you know, while, while they're trying to do something. I've gotten four since I've been standing here talking to you, but it didn't allow it to distract me, because talking to you is the most important thing I have to do right now. So focus on your priority. Do everything you can to avoid the distraction. Some people need music to study. I was one of those people, okay? Put on your music. Um, if you need to, put on headphones to help avoid the distractions. You know, put in your earbuds. Um, but you need to be able to control your environment when it comes to, stu to studying or schoolwork or something else you're going to be doing for yourself. And you need to make sure the people around you understand how important a priority is for you to do that and to do it properly. Answer your question? Thanks. Sir? Um, realistically speaking, like my dad says that what, anyone who steps inside the house, uh, everyone is treated equal, mm -hmm. but he is more equal, right? So realistically, your parents' time can also get in the way if they if they have to take you somewhere, right? Um, at our age, we really don't have uh, the right to like just say that I'm doing good. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Don't annoy me. I'm not going anywhere with you, right? Like, truthfully, your parents' time is also your time too, right? Well, let me share with you that I that I was once your age, believe it or not. <laughs> And my, I have a son who's 20 years old who is uh, going to be attending West Virginia University. The one thing, and, and I think any, and we have a couple of adults in the room, I think any of you that are parents can agree that the most important thing for your child, and I'm not calling you a child by age, I'm just saying your child because you, you are the offspring, uh, is your education. Okay? And the, the one thing you have to remember, your parents, and me being one, I can attest to this, have priorities too. And sometimes a priority for my son is he needs to mow the lawn. That is a task he doesn't like doing, but pops on, up on his priority list because I put it there. But if my son comes to me and says, Dad, I have a report due on Wednesday and I'm one third of the way done, all of a sudden my priority of his mowing the lawn gets moved way down the list and his report goes to the top. One of the things I can suggest, and, and, and Culturally, that may be different than the way some of you are brought up. You know, I'll, I'll tell you a quick aside. Um, I'm, you know, you, you heard I had a lot of titles in my life. There's one title I said I always wanted. Um, there's a company called Lucky Gold Star. Anybody ever hear of Lucky Gold Star? You know the TVs, LG, LG. I thought they made TVs. That's all I knew. You know, it shows you what, what you think and what reality are two different things. LG makes TVs, and they make refrigerators and microwaves. Uh, they're a Korean company. They own three universities in Korea. They own two professional soccer teams and a badminton team. They own a baseball team. It's huge. I had no idea. But what happened was the, 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 organiz the company was started by a guy whose last name was Koo. He had seven kids, and he put every kid, when they were about 10, 11 years old, he sent them to another country. Okay, so Charlie Koo came to the United States. Their office is in Englewood Cliffs up in Bergen County. And Charlie is the chairman of the North American operation for Lucky Gold Star. And every year, they get together, and the oldest son, because in their culture, the oldest son is the leader, is the chairman of the chairman. And I always say that if there's ever a title I could get, I would want to be the chairman of the chairman, because you, know, you really can't go any higher than that. But... Titles and, and positions mean nothing if you can successfully communicate to your parents how important your priority list is, okay? And this is something that actually the priority list comes in to help you. If you have a report due on Wednesday and your father comes to you on Tuesday and says, I need you to do this, this, and this, if you pull out your priority list and say, Dad, I have a report due tomorrow, and I've already done this, this, and this, and, and what you want me to do is on my list, but I need to do this report first, I guarantee you he will understand that. 
guarantee you he will say, okay, because every parent I know, uh, and Governor, you can correct me if I'm wrong, every parent I know is willing to sacrifice their needs for their child's needs. And if your child, especially around education, we will do everything and bend over backwards to make sure that you get everything you can at school. So that's communication. That is a totally different workshop. <laughs> Um, but the, the one thing you, 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 and that's a collective you, not you, you, you need to do is not be afraid to voice your priority to him and say, Dad, I want to do that, but I need to do this first. Okay? Who else? Who else? Yes, ma'am. That's what you're doing. Do you recommend multitasking? That's up to you. Okay? Multitasking is when you don't have enough time to get every task done in its own individual time. Okay? If you can study, and you can text and you can Instagram all at the same time and keep an eight, uh, 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 keep A's in all your classes, more power to you. I can't do that. <laughs> okay, I can't do that. I study for certifications. I need to shut the door and put my headphones on like we talked about and, and avoid distractions. Um, at your age, I don't recommend it because you need, to, you need to focus on the task that's at hand. And with the schoolwork you're getting, and I need to tell you, you're doing schoolwork in middle school nowadays, especially around math, that we did in our junior year of high school. So with the difficulty of the work that teachers are asking you to do today, you need to really focus on your task at hand. You know, you can move some of that multitasking stuff down your list into low priority stuff. You may be able to do things at once. Make those top priorities the only thing you're working on. Over here was a question. Yes, sir. What do you do your best to work when you procrastinate? Well, like we talked about before, procrastination and laziness are almost the same thing. What you need to do is get your priority list written. And again, I'm going to keep saying this over and over and over again. That's going to be the hardest thing you're going to do, is make this priority list and do it every day, because it really takes a discipline. And you actually have to teach yourself to do this. Um, if you have the iPhone, you can use a task manager to do that. You can prioritize thing on there. Android has an app for it. Um, you can write it down, you can do it on your phone, but if you do the task list and you make the priority list, you won't be able to procrastinate because you'll know three days in advance when something's due, but you'll also be able to look and see you have something due two days beforehand, one day beforehand, and that day. So you realize you can't wait to get that task done because in three days you're going to have something else pushing up against it. You know, it's all about focus. It's all about focusing and recognizing your priorities. Who else? If no one else, um, Governor has my contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, call me. Um, I will promise you this, if you call or email me, I will put aside everything I'm doing. I will set my priority list and task list aside for any one of you that needs any help. Thank you for the opportunity to come and talk to you for a couple minutes today. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you enjoyed that video. I think it's really cool. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. It was a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Governor. Uh, I'm just going to pick up on uh, the topic that uh, Steve, uh, Governor Steve, have left with, mm -hmm. and this that sort of deals with what you guys are doing on the Lions Learning Center. Okay, I see that uh, uh, when I when I when we pull up the report, uh, many of you don't show up on the report, and uh, some of you have not completed the required courses for you to graduate. I'm, I'm pretty sure um, all of you know that uh, you you will be graduating on what day? June 12th. Okay. So time management. You have to prioritize your your tasks. You have to you have to make sure that you finish off your your required required courses. What is the deadline for uh, finishing up the courses? June 6th. June 6th. Okay. Uh, before we, we go into the details, I have the list of the, the, if anybody wants to know how many courses that they have finished, I have a list. That is what we were working on for the last few days. Uh, time management, you do like you plan your, your uh, courses that you want to take. Another thing is, you need to look at the details many times. 
Because may, many times you do things in a hurry, and what happens? Let let's let's pick up the examples that uh, she was talking about. Uh, taking the garbage out. Okay. Your your parents tell you to take the garbage out. You just put the bag, try to drag it out, and everything spills up. Then it will take more time to clean that thing up and put the garbage out. So when you are doing it for the first time, you should do it do it right. Uh, I brought that thing up because lots of people from this group, okay, when you you log down to the learning center, okay, you have put in a wrong district, and we cannot pull in your information, whatever courses that you have done, how you did. Uh, we cannot pull that information unless you have. 16 J written as 1, 6, no space, J. Okay. Many of you have not done that. And that is why, like, sort of, like, when I announced the uh, list of the, the people who have already completed enough number of courses, okay, your name probably doesn't show because you didn't put in the right district number. Uh, so one second. <laughs> So, uh, with that, anybody have anybody? Does anybody have any any questions about Lions Learning Center? Yes. Just confirm it's sixteen no space lower case, or is it lowercase uppercase doesn't matter, but sixteen J has to be the the, the district. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I put the sixteen J thing in this morning. Yes, I got got the report now. Yes. You need to complete at least six courses. Um, like I, I, I have, I have the list. If you want to see if you have completed the courses or not. Uh, yes. Uh, like what happens if you do the extra credit, or if you go above? Like, uh, that is better for you, right? Okay. <laughs> if you do it extra, I'm not going to stop you. Okay. There is somebody who is. Who has completed the, the the courses that we like we have prescribed and is taking more courses? Okay, somebody has just this morning I pulled up a report. Somebody has completed twelve courses. Okay. It is it is good for you. This is like according to me, education is not only to, to get get a certification. It's to understand. Right? It's to get the knowledge, build your skills, and that is how like sort of we are. We are doing it, and uh, that is why we were exposing you to different uh, presenters with different backgrounds. That that enhances your ability to understand people, ability to uh, build your skill sets. Uh, so, if you take more courses, I, I don't have any issues. You know, you won't graduate unless you you finish six courses. And actually, it's not only any random six courses. The courses yeah. that were you want, right? Because the Lions Learning Center has a lot more courses than what we are covering. For example, I know some people have done courses on coaching. Now, it's a great thing that they have done it, but that doesn't come on the list of uh, courses that are mandatory. Yeah. I needed to like, qualify my statement. You need to do at least six courses from the list that was given to you. And when I said extra credit there, hmm, that doesn't qualify for that number six okay you cannot have like sort of a course on the same topic say for example like the extra credit is like uh, we did a seminar on uh, innovation okay? and there is a course on creativity so creativity was extra credit so if you do uh, both of them it, it does count towards one credit for completion of your course so i want you guys to to finish off as many courses as possible from that list Ideally, all, all 10 courses that we are going to have, you should complete all those 10 courses in time uh, before, um, before 6th. Yeah, and I do want to reiterate that 6th deadline is not going to be extended. Do not come to us on 5th night saying that my Lions Learning Center on my computer never worked. So, you know, now, so can I please have an extension till 5th? It will not happen. 
we don't want to disappoint anybody but please consider that six is a hard deadline not to be changed i've also noticed that after we sent out reminders and made calls this week uh some of you have waken up which is a great thing so people are finishing like five courses in one day again it's a quality right it's not only that uh, you are finishing through all the courses in one day because if you do the course like you're supposed to uh, five, doing five courses in one evening is an impossible task. So I know that when someone tries to do that, you're not really getting the most out of the effort that you're putting in. So don't only concentrate on the number of courses that you finish, but try and absorb what is being presented to you. That's the value. Just you know, having 12 in front of your name is not what we are looking for right like yeah you know that is a measure that we are going to use uh, but that's not the measure that you should be using yourself to see what you're getting out of this effort that you're putting in so again as he said we have a list if uh, you want to confirm uh, with me you can uh, once we are done you can approach me uh, yeah uh, anybody anybody else has any any questions about learning center um, I love the email for the number ID. Instead of 41, I use 14, and then I all of a sudden work for me. Then I use 41 to the network. Yeah, when, in the beginning, it says like 4, 1, 3, 2, 2, 5, 8. And for me, 4, 1, 2, 3, 2, 5, 8. What is your name? Mary. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, two things. One thing is you have to go and change the district to uh, both of you. Yeah, uh, both of you have uh, put in, uh, like one of you have put in Woodbridge as a district and one of you have put in as 16 as a district. It has to be 16J. Uh, the number, uh, num like the number that, okay, uh, who is Ashita? You, you need to talk to me. Will, like your number is, is sort of, uh, her number is right. Mm -hmm. Your membership number. Oh, because okay. when you emailed, you wrote 413. Yeah, her number is right. Your number, we'll, we'll discuss about that. Okay. Um, Did you get the courses that I finished today? Today, I will get the report later. I check the report in the morning. Anybody else? No? Let's, let's stop the broadcast.